Yeah.
because the human spirit is quite easy. It's very simple and easy for us to forget. We forget so easily. And that's why I'm focusing on you reflecting on the goodness of God.
forsake you. Father, we draw from the wells of life. We give you honor. We give you glory. Thank you. 
people, leave your seats and give them a warm smile and welcome them to church. You need to leave your seats. I can't see you doing that. Amen. Make sure the person is smiling. Make sure the person is smiling. Welcome to church. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to another level. Hallelujah. Yes. Hey. We're going to another level. Amen. Church, give me a shout. I want to see your hands like this. Come on. Everybody, come on. Hallelujah. Can we have the words? Come on. 
God is good and all the time. Hallelujah. David said in hundred, Psalm 122 that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. Are you glad you are here today? Yes. Are you glad you are here today? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. We give you glory. Honor, power, dominion, majesty belongs to you. Hallelujah. Amen. At this point, I want all of you to join me to pray over our Father who is about to mount the pulpit to bless us with the holy word from the throne room of grace. Open your mouth and speak over our pastor this morning that the Lord will grant him precision of speech he will touch his lip of clay and give him utterance he will speak to our understanding he will touch our hearts and we shall be blessed in the name of jesus begin to pray immortal and invisible god the only wise god we have come before you this morning we didn't come to see man we didn't come to hear man but we have come to hear from you lord this is the reason why we left our homes to come. Even when we lay down, we slept. We awoke because David said he was glad when they said unto him, let us go to the house of God. Therefore, we were in even a hurry to come because in the house of God, there is fullness of joy. In the house of God, there is peace. In the house of God, there is more to know and to hear. Therefore, we have come, my God. We pray your hand over your man's servant we pray for precision of words, O oh Lord. We pray that you will touch his lip of clay. In the name of Jesus, Father, speak to him even as he speaks to us, to our understanding. We bless you for today that you have made, O oh God, that we should rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you that you are God and there is none like you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. With a clap of rain. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. You're welcome to Living Springs International Church. Hallelujah. Um, just before I give the word for today, there's a video that I want us to watch attentively. It has to do with ISI 2024. So please just give us um, the next maybe three, four minutes and let's hear our bishop as he speaks to all of us. We have touched many lives. Release potential. Celebrating 20 years, Iron Sharpens Iron 2024, July 17th to the 21st. So there you are, folk. This little video has said a lot about ISI 2024, our 20th anniversary. Like we said, for 20 years, we have helped leaders, we have empowered leaders, we have released potential. Listen, there's a leader residing on your inside, crying out for expression. And that is why we ask you to come, join us, register, and make yourselves better. Because when society loses leadership, society breaks down. 
many of society's problems are leadership problems. You are that solution. So this year, I expect you to be here. Take some time off. Buy a ticket. Invest. The greatest investment you can ever make is to invest in yourself. And the best thing, from the 1st of May, we are opening our registration. If you've never attended, come to the headquarters where your father is. I promise you your life will never be the same. The exposure alone will be amazing. Great things are going to happen. From Wednesday all the way to Sunday, on the Saturday, we have a worship night. Nathaniel Basse, Joe Metal, Dunsin, Ntokozo, I may sing, who knows. But it's going to be amazing. Whatever you do, please, 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 go to Google Play Store, go to App Store, and download Advanced Life app and register. There are so many amazing things that are going to happen. We are looking forward to seeing you right here in Logavon, Georgia. What an awesome experience it will be. So let's do that. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Hallelujah. So there you have it. ISI 2024. And that will be the 20th anniversary. Hallelujah. It's amazing what Bishop has been able to do over the last 20 years. Um, and the work that he has done. Uh, I believe that if we have the opportunity, we should go and see the, the great work that has been achieved. Um, when he left London and left everything behind to go and start a new work in a place where he hardly knew anyone, it has to take boldness, hallelujah. It takes boldness, it takes courage to be able to do something like this. And so we want to go and support him as many of us as are able. Um, I believe that for those that we spoke to about visa, um, now it's too late to, to get an appointment date for the visa between now, I doubt that, but it's still worth a try, between now and July. But for those of you who are able to travel, please, if you want to go, um, continue to give your names to Minister Francis or to Minister Boateng. And um, what happens is um, some of the families over there are so generous that they, they, they will be more than willing to host um, some of our people, as many as they can, uh, make sure that you are well looked after, you will not regret. So please, if we need to make arrangements, then you need to give us your name um, as early as possible so that we can make sure that you have a place where you're going to stay for those few days. Amen. And for the leaders as well, I encourage as many of you as are willing and as are able to go, there's an, uh, 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 an example or an analogy that he, Bishop made, I think, years back. I think it was my first ISI. And he said to us that, you know, a, a big juggernaut or these articulated vehicles that supply petrol to petrol stations, these big petrol tankers, um, they carry so much uh, um, pet, uh, diesel or petrol or fuel, if I can say that, and their aim is to deliver to all the garages or the filling stations along the way, gas stations, as some call it. And then he says, but that truck itself also has a petrol tank, even though it's carrying so many gazillion, whatever, gallons of, of, of fuel, it also needs fuel for its own tank. And so that if it runs out of fuel in its tank itself, then it will have no opportunity to deliver all the cargo that it is carrying to supply others. In other words, as leaders, sometimes we get bent out. We, we get stressed out, we get tired, and it is a wonderful place to go, to just go and refresh yourself and, and, and revive yourself and listen to someone else do the preaching. I remember our first um, ISI, we went in with our suits and ties and everything because we, we didn't know what to expect. And Bishop came and said, from tomorrow, I don't want to see any of you <laughs> in your shirt and your ties and your suits. And he said, it's because of your insecurities that you dress like that. But when you come here, I want you to come in your shorts, in your t-shirts, just relax, feel free, come and enjoy the presence of God, come and worship, come and, and, and just enjoy the atmosphere. Don't be worried about your message you're going to preach, etc." And it takes a great father to be able to say that to his sons. And so we are eternally grateful to him. So I encourage you, the leaders especially, as many of you as are able and are willing, 
if you make your mind up that you want to go, I'm sure that God will make a way for you to go and see the wonderful work that is going on in Loganville, Atlanta, Georgia. Hallelujah. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Well, we have a word from God this morning. Hallelujah. And the title of the message is quite simple. It is Manifest Boldness. Hallelujah. Say with me, Manifest Boldness. Hallelujah. Manifest Boldness. I believe that the story of the Bible is actually the story of ordinary men and women like yourself and me, myself. Ordinary men and women who were able to do extraordinary things because they were inspired by the Spirit of God. That is the one thing I find about the Bible. It is a story of ordinary men and women. Men and women who were inspired, who were empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. And they were able to do the extraordinary, amazing, mind-boggling things. Why? Because of the Spirit of God and also because of what I believe is the spirit of courage. Hallelujah. They had courage. And beloved, if we are going to achieve anything in our own lives, I want to say to someone that it's going to take boldness, it's going to take courage. And courage is nothing but fearlessness in the face of danger. Fearlessness in the face of danger. Whatever it is that we're going to do, it's not going to be a walk in the park. It's going to take boldness. It's going to take courage. Men and women of courage and faith, fearless in the face of danger, determined to overcome the odds that were against them, and in the process overcoming great challenges of their time. Whether they were among enemies, whether they were young people, whether they were old people, there is a thread that I see through the stories that are in the Bible that these men and women achieved great things because, number one, of the Spirit of God that was upon them, that transformed them, and then because also that they were bold, they were courageous. You would hear in the Bible oftentimes God would speak to a leader and say, be bold and be courageous. Be strong and be of good courage. Be bold and be courageous because whatever it is we're planning to do, beloved, we're going to find opposition, especially when it has to do with the things of God. And I want to just look through some of the prime examples that I see in my Bible, and then I'll get to my text for today. So when you look in the Bible, for example, at the story of Zerubbabel, and Yeshua, or um, yeah, Yeshua, in, in the building of the house of God, which was in Jerusalem. We know how they had been in captivity and how they were given um, liberty or freedom by Cyrus to go back and to do these things, to rebuild um, the house of God that was broken. And later on, also, Nehemiah would be given permission to go and build the walls of Jerusalem that had also been broken down. Come with me to Ezra, please. Ezra chapter number five. Ezra chapter number five. Verse number one. Then the prophet Haggai and Zechariah, the son of Ido, prophesy, prophets prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel, who were over them. So Zerubbabel, the son of Sheltiel, and Jeshua, the son of Jozadak, rose up and began to build the house of God, which was in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. They rose up. They defied the temptation to sit. They rose up and they began to build the house of God, which was in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were with them, helping them. At the same time, Tatanai, the governor 
of the region beyond the river and Shetha Bosnai and their companions. There's always a Tatanai somewhere. And Shetha Bosnai somewhere. And their companions somewhere. And they came to them and spoke these and spoke thus to them. Who has commanded you to build this temple and finish this war? Who has commanded you? There will be always somebody who is questioning you. Even when you want to step up in your zeal and do much more than you are doing, somebody is going to rise up and question you. We, these days, you are too something. Who, who said you, sh you, are, you are all over the place? Somebody is going to question you. They came and they questioned them and they said, who told you? And this was something that had been planned by God, purposed by God, predetermined by God. God had already spoken about how Cyrus would become king and how Cyrus would give the, the Jews the permission to go back and to build the house of God that was broken down and later for Nehemiah to also go and build the walls. Some accounts tell us that the prophecy about Cyrus was given by prophet Isaiah, I believe, about, I think it was about 200 years or so before he was born. So for 200 years, this prophecy was waiting for a manifestation. And now Cyrus becomes king. And he gives the order for them to go and rebuild for those who are willing to go back, to go back and build. And this man, Tatanai, has the nerve to ask them that who took, commanded you or who told you to come and build this thing? If we were to read through the story of Zerubbabel and what they encountered, you would see the opposition that they encountered. Many efforts were made, even to the point of their own safety to stop them from building the house of God. So when it comes to the things of God, we must understand that we need to have the spirit of courage. We need to have the spirit of boldness so that we are able to give undivided attention to the work of building the house of God. And someone said, in battle, boldness and courage, we know the story of David and his words to Goliath. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 17. Quickly, if you can come with me. 1 Samuel, chapter number 17. And this young boy is in battle. And he's standing before a huge giant. There is no way you can even compare the, the, the two individuals. One is a veteran, a, a mercenary who is used to the, the art of war. And one is just a young, probably 16-year-old boy. And 1 Samuel 17, I want to read, I think, 45 and 46. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. The God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. And I will strike you and take your head from you. <laughs> and this day, I will give the carcass of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air. And the wild beasts of the earth. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. That all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's. And he will give you into my hands. Or he will give you into our hands. Say with me, the battle is the Lord's. So when we come to battle, we also need this sort of spirit. This spirit of boldness and courage to look the giant in the face. It says, you, you come to me with your... Because the giant accused him that am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? Of course you are. 
Of course. He says, you come to me with your javelin and your spear and your whatever, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. If it was in our day, David would say, I come against you or I come before you in the name of Jesus. I stand against you this hour in the name of Jesus because the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are safe. So number one, when we are building, in whatever we are building, whether it's our own ministries, our own businesses, whether it's the house of God, we need to be uh, aware that there, there has to be boldness and courage. Otherwise, there will be an opportunity to walk away. In battle, like David just spoke to, to Goliath. And the interesting thing is, David didn't even have a sword. I was saying here on Friday, he didn't have a sword. And yet he was saying these things, I'll cut your head off. And I'll give your body to the birds of the air. Didn't have a sword. He knew how to speak. And he spoke so well. He spoke and said to Saul earlier that I've been in a situation where I had to wrestle a lamb out of the mouth of a lion. Out there in the wilderness all by myself. And I've been in a situation where I had to take a lamb from the mouth of a bear. And I held the jaws of the lion and ripped it up. And took the little kid goat out of the mouth of this beast. And he said, the God who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear. The same God will deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. Many times I say that when we go through challenges and God brings us out. It is so that we can have something to testify about. And in that testimony there is great power. That the God who delivered me yesterday... He will deliver me today. He will deliver me again tomorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Against great foes. Again, in the book of Judges, chapter number 7. And from verse 7 all the way to 23. I will not read that because we probably will not be able to go through all the scriptures that I have. But Judges tells us the story of Gideon and how Gideon was very much an, honor, on, uh, an, an honor, uh, ordinary person, as I said, that the story of the Bible is the story of ordinary men who were empowered by the Holy Spirit. And they rose up from being ordinary to do extraordinary things. And Gideon is a typical example of that. A man who was hiding from the Midianites and threshing his grain in not in the open, but in a wine press. As I said the other day, a wine press is dug. It's, it's a hole that you dig where they tread the grapes. They put it in there and they tread it with their feet, etc. And this man was hiding in the pit, trying to thresh grain. And when you are threshing grain, you need the wind to blow to help you to do that work. So can you imagine him being in a pit, hiding? Because if he does that in the open and the media and I see that somebody is threshing in that distant um, whatever place, they're going to go there and they probably will kill him. So he's hiding. But whilst he's hiding, God is already watching him and sends an angel to him who says, Thou mighty man of valor. And sometimes it may look like your efforts are not enough. But God, who is a faithful God, he knows our strength. And so he comes to him, and the Bible says at some point in the life of Gideon that the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. And Gideon was transformed. And he blew the trumpet, and he called all the Abiezrites or his family people to march out behind him, called all the other tribes as well to march out behind him so that they became a formidable force and they were able to go to war. And the Bible says that Gideon's army is interesting, isn't it? His army was an army of 32,000. And God said the army is too big. Sometimes God will tell you it's too big because he doesn't want men to take the glory. Men will take the glory and say we did it by our own strength. And God says, uh-uh. Tell them that on Mount Gilead, if anybody is fearful, they should go back home. And out of the 32,000, guess how many went back? 22,000. If you were the leader, you would be scared. Hey, because the media nice, they are a multitude, probably a million. And you've only got 32,000, and God says, that's too much. So he's only got 10,000 left. And what does he do? God says, even the 10,000 is too much. 
So go to the water side. I told you the other day, go to the water side and drink. And just watch them how they drink. Because they are thirsty, some of them will just bow and bend over like this and start, and, you know, lapping the water. He says, put them on one side. And then watch those who will scoop the water in their hands. Look left, look right, look around them before they drink. And put those ones on one side. So he did that. And only 300 <laughs> were sensible enough to scoop the water and look around before they drank it. So then he says to the 9,700, go home. And the Bible says with the 300, God gave him the victory. It takes boldness. If you are a leader, it takes boldness. Against great odds, again, David and Goliath, and his words that he spoke to the giant. When threatened, it takes boldness and great courage. We know the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter number three. We can't, you can write it down if you want to, and then later maybe you can read for yourself. But Daniel chapter number three tells us the story of these three Hebrew boys, Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego, and the Bible tells us of how the king, the book at Neza, raised up this huge statue. And he said to everyone that when you hear the flute, the harp, and the symphony, and all the sounds going up, you should bow to this image. And if anybody didn't bow, they were going to be put in a fiery furnace. Who? These three boys defied the king's order. And so the report was saying that those three boys, the Hebrew boys, they don't respect you, which is why they haven't bowed to their image. So Nebuchadnezzar calls them and he says, okay, I'm going to give you guys a chance to bow. So we're going to play the music, especially for the three of you. And when you hear that, I want you to do the honors and bow. Immediately they said to him, oh, king, we, we, you don't need to waste time in this matter because we don't bow to your kind of gods. We don't do that. So don't even waste your time and play the music. But our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us. Listen, this God we serve is a God who delivers. We may not be where we used to be. Or we may not be where we want to be, I beg your pardon. But we surely are not where we used to be. And I know that little by little, God is working on us. Little by little, God is changing our story. And the day is coming that we'll look back and see what he has brought us through. They said, we're not going to bow to you, O king, and to your idol. So the king was furious. The Bible says he was in a, such a rage that he commanded them to hit the furnace seven times more. Beloved, Christianity takes courage. It takes boldness. It takes a deep conviction. Because there will always be an excuse to walk away. And the Bible says this, these young boys were dressed and they clothed them and put a cap on them, turbans, because they wanted them to catch fire. They dressed them with all kinds of garments that they probably didn't need. And then they bundled them and threw them into the furnace. And you know the, the amazing thing, Uncle Joel, the Bible says the people who threw them in, the fire was so hot that they themselves perished. And then guess what? The king looked into the fire and he saw something amazing. They had bundled them and tied them up and thrown them into the fire. But the king said, did we not put three men in this fire? And they said, yes, O king, true O king. He says, but I see a fourth man. And they are all loose. We tie them up, but they are loose. They are walking in the fire. And I see a fourth man and the appearance and the look of that fourth man is like the son of God. Oh, in the hot fire of affliction, that's when we see the glory of God. He saw the glory of God. And there he was. And the king said, hey, come on, oh yeah, let's go and bring them out. They went and they brought them out. And the Bible says, the fire had no power over these three boys. Hallelujah. They did not disgrace their God. I remember the words of Reverend Eastwood. I hope he pardons me for repeating those words. When, unfortunately, he lost his daughters. And people were saying all kinds of foolishness and saying all kinds of things. 
And he was in our old place in Deptford preaching. And he said, what happened to me that will not necessarily happen to you? Because God knows that if it happens to some of you, you will disgrace God. You will disgrace God. If you go through such loss, such tragedy, you probably may never step into the church anymore, let alone to become a chorister, let alone to take the microphone and encourage other people, to let go of your pain and all the difficulties you've had to go through, to lift up the microphone and encourage others. It's not everybody who can do that. Hallelujah. It says, for some of you, you will disgrace God. The same thing happened to Daniel. Again, his one is in Daniel chapter number 6. And from verse 7 to 13. Again, you can read that later for yourself. We know the story of how they conspired against him. The satraps were jealous of him. And they, they were able to compel the king to make a decree, a bogus decree. That let nobody petition anybody, any God, apart from you. And let nobody make any supplication to anybody apart from you. And the Bible says that when Daniel heard that the decree had been passed, the Bible says that the decree of the Medo-Persians, it had no reverse gear. If the king says something, he cannot change his mouth. Whatever he says, it stands. So when Daniel heard that they had passed this decree, the Bible says he went home. And opened his window, not on the ground floor. I'm sure it was up there where everybody could see him. Opened his window towards Jerusalem. And that day, he just went on his knees and he prayed. Several times in that day. And they were watching him. So they took the report to the king. And again, listen, I'm saying Christianity takes courage. Christianity requires boldness. And that spirit is the spirit of God himself. So Daniel defies them, and you know the story. He ends up before the king. The king gives him a punch and says, you are not supposed to do this. And the king tried, the Bible says he tried everything to let go of Daniel because he knew that these people were setting him up because they didn't like him. But he couldn't. He said, you have already made your decree and you need to um, abide by what you have said. The long and the story, uh, the short of the story is, Daniel ends up in the lion's den. You know the story. And again, the lions were so hungry. But the Bible says that they did not touch the man. Hallelujah. They didn't touch him. And the king came early the next morning because he couldn't sleep. He said, Daniel, has the God whom you serve continually, has he delivered you? And he said, yes, my king. Because he knew or God knows that there is no evil or malice in my heart. And I've done nothing wrong. We know the story. So Daniel is spared from the lion's den. It takes courage. It takes a conviction that is deeper than anything that is on the surface. An inner conviction, inner courage, inner determination, boldness in the face of difficulty, in the face of opposition. It takes boldness to do this work. In times of death, Samson prayed for courage and boldness. The last thing he did, he said, let me take revenge on these people who have taken out my eyes. And he did that. And he shook the pillars of the place where he was. And that day of his death, the Bible says he killed more people, more Philistines than he had ever done throughout his history. Jonathan, bold, courageous. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 14, there was a day when the Philistines had gathered against Israel. And the Bible says that all the children of Israel were gathered with Paul, uh, with Saul. And he didn't know, Saul didn't know that his own son, Jonathan, had slipped out with his armor bearer. And he had gone to the camp of the Philistines. And what did he say? He says, for, I, I like what he says, he says, for nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. So just the two of them against the whole army, Jonathan and his armor bearer. And the Bible says when they got there, Jonathan said, if we show up and they say to us, come, then we know that 
God has given them into our hands. But if we show up and they say, stay where you are, we are coming to you, then we are in trouble. So they showed themselves to the, the, the Philistines, about 20 of them who were kind of like watching. I'm sure they were, they were watchmen who were out there. And they showed themselves, and the people said, ah, look at these feeble Hebrews. They are running away from the holes where they've been hiding. Come over, bring, come over. And the moment they said, come over, he said to his servant, God has given them into our hands. So they went and they slaughtered about 20 of them. Now Saul hears a loud noise in the camp of the Philistines. And he's worried and he says, who is not here? Let's take a row. Let's check who is not When they checked, it was his own son, Jonathan, and the armor bearer. Boldness, courage. He said, God, nothing restrains God from saving with few or with many. We sometimes are bogged down with numbers. But nothing restrains God. If only two people show up at the prayer meeting, nothing restrains God to deliver, either by few or by many. Hallelujah. What about this man called Caleb? Caleb comes in Judges chapter number, not, not Judges, Joshua chapter number 14, and from verses number 10 to 12. He comes and he says, the Bible says, and now he comes to uh, Joshua. Joshua is in Gilgal. And by now, Joshua is the leader. And Caleb comes to him and he says, And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, we are alive for a reason. COVID came, some passed. But you are still here. Maybe you even got the COVID, but you are still here. It means God is not finished with you and I. God has kept me alive, he said. As he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke these words to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, here I am, this day, 85 years old. <laughs> as yet, I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for. For war, both for going out and coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke <laughs> in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. 85-year-old man. Today, many 85-year-olds are probably in an old home somewhere. Their lives are spent. But this 85-year-old man was different. He said, 45 years ago, God spoke something concerning myself and you, Joshua. When the spies went and they came back with a negative report, so that the hearts of the children of Israel were discouraged, two of them came with a positive result, uh, report. Two of them. And I always say that oftentimes, the majority report is not necessarily the truth. Then the majority may not be right. The minority, the two out of the 12, they were right. He said, let us go up. If God has given us the promise, then he will give us the land. These people are bred. Let us go and take over the land. And the other 10 wanted to stone the two because their words didn't match up. So now we see Joshua, uh, Caleb. 45 years later, and he comes to Joshua and says, my strength. And I always read that scripture, and it baffles me because I'm sure he wasn't talking about his physical strength. His strength is God. And he said, the God that I serve is the same yesterday, is the same today, is the same forever. He hasn't changed. His ability to give victory hasn't waned. He is still the same. And so he says to Joshua that my strength is the same as it was 45 years ago. It can't be his physical strength he's talking about. It cannot be. But his strength is in God. The Bible says the strength of Israel is not a man. Beloved, your strength is not a man. People may write you off. But as long as God has written you in, he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all 
that you could ever ask or think. That's who he is. He's able to do that. And so he said, my strength is the same. So give me this mountain. We heard in those times that the Anakim were giants. Zamzumins. These were giants. Huge guys. He says, we heard that they, they were there. And they are still there. But me, an 85-year-old man, give me the mountains. I must possess my possession. This year, you must be determined that you will possess what God has given to you. That no funny devil will take away from you what God has entrusted into your hands. In the name of Jesus. You're going to have to square your shoulders and say, what is mine is mine. And I'm taking it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of our God suffers violence. But violence men take it by. It takes boldness. It takes courage to be able to sweep aside all the negativity and to make up your mind that, listen, I'm going for what God says he has already given to me. And Caleb says that. He says, give me the mountains. And guess what? The Bible says Joshua looked at him and says, I've given you Hebron. And he went to Hebron and drove the giants out. 85-year-old man. You are never too old to accomplish what God says he has given to you. It doesn't matter how people look at you and think, oh, you've gone past it. You are never too young like Jonathan. Jonathan was young when he ventured into the camp of the Philistines. Nor are you too old like Caleb when you are 85 years old to do what God says he's going to do with your life. I pray that this year God will, will, will empower you and I and enable us to be able to take that next step towards the goal that he has set for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. What about another, let me add a woman. There's another woman I saw when I was looking through my, my scriptures. Esther. Esther. In the book of Esther chapter 4, verses 8 and then 16 also, uh, verse 8 and verse 16. We know how this very bad guy, Haman, very, very, very bad guy, he's conspired and managed to come up with all this nonsense, and he wants to exterminate all the Jews. Now, I, I don't get Haman. You have a problem with Mordecai. But now, in your anger, you want to wipe out every, every Jew. Hey, it's an out here. You want to wipe out every Jew because you have a misunderstanding with one man. Mordecai won't bow to you. He doesn't respect you because he has sussed you and he knows that you are not genuine. So he was angry. And we know the story. God, the king to write a date when they were going to just exterminate all the Jews, finish them off. And Mordecai hears this and sends word to Esther and says, don't think because you are in the palace, you are going to escape because you are also one of us. If you don't do anything, help will come from outside. But don't think that you are going to escape because you are in the palace. What does Esther say? This is the scripture. Esther says, go and tell Mordecai. That I said, go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My mates and I will fast likewise. I will go to the king while it's against the law. And if I perish, I perish. I will go to the king. But it takes prayer and fasting first. She just didn't get up and go. She understood the, pu the purpose of prayer and fasting. Fasted and prayed. This year, maybe you and I need to fast again. Maybe we need to pray again. Fasted and prayed. And says, I will go to the king. And whatever happens, happens. And guess what? When she went to the king, the king said, hello, my queen. What brings you here? What can I offer you? Up to half of my kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. But it took guts. It took boldness. Because the other flip side was that if anybody goes to the king and they have not been invited, the penalty was death. So she could have died in that venture. But I'm saying that if we're going to achieve anything this year, we must be a bit more daring. To be bold means to be daring. 
It means to be willing to take risks. If you don't want to take risks, you may never get to where you're supposed to get to. You have to be daring. You have to be very, very daring and very, very determined that I'm going for this. And God will give you the grace in the name of Jesus. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Be strong and of good courage. Moses, I, the other day I was looking at Exodus chapter 4. I don't know whether you've looked at that scripture like that. And Moses is, you, you know the problem with Moses? Moses, Moses was more afraid of rejection than anything else. He's like some of us. We, we can't stand rejection. But if you're a leader, you must be ready. Leadership and rejection, they go together. You couldn't stand rejection. What if I go and they say, you have not appeared to me? And, and they doubt everything that I'm saying, my credibility. He was more worried about that. So God looks at me and says, Moses, what's in your hand? What's in your hand? This morning, the question that I want to ask somebody is, what is in your hand? What is in your hand? He says, a rod. It's quite obvious. It's a rod. And God says to him, throw it down. And Moses throws the rod down, and he becomes a serpent. And he runs away from that thing that he has been holding in his hand. If we give God the time and the space, you'll be amazed what you're already holding in your hand. If you commit it to his hands, you'll be, he was running from the very thing he's been holding all these years because he became a snake. Then God says something to him. He says, now Moses, grab the snake by the tail. Anybody who knows anything about snakes knows that you don't grab a snake by the tail. You must be out of your mind. Because thou shalt be beaten. So we see the boldness of Moses. The guy was bold. What did he do? The same snake he was running away from, he went and grabbed the thing by the tail. So his problem was not boldness. His, his problem was rejection. Couldn't stand rejection. But God knew that he was a bold guy. He reached out and he grabbed it. All through history, when we look at David, boldness and courageous. He was courageous in the face of battle. We've talked about Gideon. We've talked about Joshua. And we've talked about Zerubbabel. We've talked also about even Solomon, King Solomon. All these were leaders that God would speak to them and say to them, be strong. This morning, I came with the same simple word. That this year, 2024, be strong and be of good courage. Be focused and be determined. And God will do something amazing with your life in the name of Jesus. You and I are going to manifest boldness in the name of Jesus. Can I have somebody say amen? amen? But that's not my text for today. My scripture for today comes from the book of Acts. Acts chapter number 4, please. And I want you to come with me to verse number 13. Boldness, courage. Looking up the English definition of boldness. I already said that courage is fearlessness in the face of danger. But boldness, it says, is of a person, an action, an idea, showing a willingness to take risks. Confident and courageous. So when you are bold, you're going to be daring, as I said. You're going to be courageous, brave, fearless, confident, positive. You need to be positive, enterprising, unafraid, valiant, undaunted, audacious. You and I need to be more audacious than we have ever been. If we are going to manifest as sons of God, the Bible says that creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And sons of God are bold. Sons of God are confident. Sons of God are decisive. And they are 
a people who are not afraid to venture into new territories. And so even when we say something is bold, it could be maybe a color, a design, or even a shape when it has a strong, vivid, and clear appearance. It's very striking, it is vivid, it is bright. But here I want us to look at Acts chapter number 4 and verse number 13. Acts chapter 4 verse 13 says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Hallelujah. When I was reading, I said, my God, maybe I'd like to argue with the people or the person uh, who wrote Acts, I think, you know, that uh, uh, look and say, excuse me, Peter and John, they were not unskilled men. They were skilled fishermen. How dare you call them unskilled men? They were skilled. If you were to put those funny Pharisees in a boat and put them in the middle of the sea somewhere, they would struggle. But Peter and John, they were skilled fishermen. But they were untrained in the word. Or maybe in, in, the, in the reading of the scriptures, the Old Testament, etc. But what they had was the experience of being with Jesus. That encounter that they had had with him was irreplaceable. And so the Bible tells us, if we go back to chapter number three, about how these things all happened. What brought them before the Sanhedrin? The Bible says here in chapter number three that one day they were going to the temple to pray. And it was the ninth hour. Ninth hour is 3 p.m. So 3 p.m., they're going to pray, and they see a man. You know, sometimes in the Bible, Auntie C, we see some people that, that there's no name. The man has no name. They just saw a man who was lame from his mother's womb. And do you know that that man was over 40 years old? When you read, I think, chapter 4, verse 22, the man was 20, over 40 years old. So for 40 years, they've been carrying him. And all he can do is to beg for arms. So they go put him by the gate, beautiful. Isn't, isn't it such a wonderful contrast? It's not even wonderful. It's just a, a, a striking contrast. By the gate, beautiful, sits a man who is crippled and who is reduced to begging. And because people going to the temple are generous, he sees Peter and John and he's looking at them because today... It might be the day that he gets some serious money. And Peter and John look intently at him. And he said to him, look at us. Look at us. Focus on us. And they looked at the man. I think he was like, I'm sure I would have said, listen, if you give me the money, give me the money and go. If you give me the money, don't waste my time. What is this look at us business? Hey, if you give me, give me, if you give me, go. But somehow... That was his day. So he looked up at them, and Peter says to him, silver and gold, we don't have. What's changed? Nothing has changed. Silver and gold, we don't have. We ain't got. But such as we have, we give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The Bible says, Peter now proceeded to grab the guy by his hand right hand. Because just those words would not have done the thing, you know. Peter had to just compel him. Say, listen to us. You can get up from where you are. This morning, I'm speaking to somebody here that you can get up from where you are. You can in the name of Jesus. People haven't heard the last of you. Your story hasn't even been written yet in the name of Jesus. And those who are writing you off, they are making a terrible mistake. Lifted him by the hand. And the Bible says immediately, strength came to his ankle bones. That's where the problem was. This morning, may the grace of God locate where that problem is in your life, in my life. 
It was in the ankle bone, that place. That's where it was. So when he lifted him up, the Bible says the guy stood up. Over 40 years. And for the first time, the Bible says he jumped. And then he leaped. And then he jumped again. I'm sure he was just checking to see whether, is this thing real? Who are these men? Where did they come from? They're not like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. These men are different. So he looked at them and he, he was holding on to them. And the Bible says, for the first time, he entered into the temple. This year, may you and I go forward. We'll go forward to where we've never gone before. Hallelujah. For the first time, he also went into the temple. And then the people saw him. And they recognized him. This guy has no excuse to be here. He's lame. He's supposed to be outside. How did this thing happen? So now the authorities are worried. And they said, how did this thing happen? And they, Peter took the opportunity. And they asked him, by what name? And you know, names, name represents authority and power. There is power in the name of Jesus. The other day I was having one of these. You know these dreams where all kinds of things, and it, like you can't, yeah, you're like a zombie. I said, in the name of Jesus. Sometimes the, the words don't come out so well. But that day I was like, oh, today the words came out very well. In the, and then the thing just disappeared. There is power in the name of Jesus. Say with me, there is power in the name of Jesus. So they said, by what name? He said that name of the man that you killed, the one that God gave us, and you have killed with lawless hands, is the same name, Jesus of Nazareth. Don't look at us like we've done anything. It is through faith in the name, that name. Pilate wanted him to go free, but you guys decided to take a robber, an arm robber, instead of Jesus. And the Bible says the men were cut to the heart. But the religious leaders, they were very angry. How dare you? Because their fear was that if this thing keeps spreading, they are in trouble. And also, a notable miracle had been done. They could see this man who has been sitting lame outside, walking and jumping. He couldn't stop jumping. Jumping and jumping and walking and running all over the place. They could see that. The, the evidence was overwhelming. Here was the man, irrefutable, undeniable evidence. Here's the guy. And yet, you know sometimes when your mind is blinded, there's nothing worse than a blind mind. Blind eyes is bad enough. But when your mind is blinded, they could see that something had happened to the man. And yet they were not willing to acknowledge. They were not willing to even repent and to say we made a mistake. Some of the people did. Now the Bible says they grabbed them and they flung them in prison because it was evening. For healing, maybe if it was you, you've gone and you've prayed and a miracle like this has happened. And then God watches you to be taken into prison. I'm sure you will question this God. What kind of God is this? After I have demonstrated such power, I end up in prison. Let's go to our master himself, the ogre himself. What did they not do to him? They did much worse. So they put them in prison, and the next day, they came out of their cells, and there was a Sanhedrin. Annas, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, all these big guys sitting. And they said, we want you to tell us again. By what name? <laughs> said, ah, the same name. Herod, Pontius Pilate, the Gentiles, and you, the Jews, you have delivered him. But the stone that was rejected, I hear that for somebody this morning. The stone that was rejected. Maybe in your family you are that stone. The stone that was rejected has become the cornerstone. You know what the cornerstone is? The cornerstone is that piece upon which the whole structure stands. If you remove the cornerstone, the whole structure will crumble. And you are that cornerstone. 
I speak to you in your family. You are that cornerstone. If they shift you out of there, the whole structure will come down. They think they can do without you, but they can't. <laughs> they can't. No, no, no. Maybe you are so quiet and so they think they can just walk over you. They can't. Because you are the reason why things are in place. You are the reason. But sometimes people don't realize that. <laughs> Empty barrels. They make the most noise. But usually the quiet ones, they are the ones who are praying for their family. Waking up in the morning, going on their knees and crying out for God to intervene. Sometimes women, we are so naive and ignorant, my fellow men. I'm telling you, if only we knew the investment that the women are making in our lives. And we are where we are by the grace of God. Hallelujah. So they call them and they ask them questions upon questions. And then they said, oh God, the thing is evident. <laughs> we can't do anything to these guys. The best thing we can do is we're going to threaten them. We're going to threaten them. So they called them back in into the room. First they took them out and then they had their plans and then they called them back in. And they said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We command you <laughs> never again to speak in that name. Don't speak, don't teach, don't preach in the name of Jesus anymore. Then Peter looks at them. And he says, whether it is right for us to listen to you or to listen to God, you yourself be the judges. <laughs> the guy didn't even wait. <laughs> he didn't even wait to walk out of the room. He looked at them. This is boldness. Is this the same Peter who was running away in Luke 22 from a little slave girl when the slave girl said, ah, you are one of them. You are, you are one of them. said, no, never. Another man also saw him and said, you are one of them. He's warming his hands by a strange fire. Strange fire. And he's warming himself. Wrong place. And one man sees and says, ah, you are one of them. He says, never. I've never seen this man. Can you imagine what level of betrayal is this? Were you not the one who said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God? And he said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, Peter. And that day, Peter was like this. And today you are saying you don't know this man. You've never seen him when you've walked with him all these years. The last straw. One person looked at him and said, hey, you are one of them. You are a Galilean. And Galileans, their accent is very thick. It's like in our language, some of the languages, the accent is thick. You can't easily just <laughs> delve in. Immediately, Simon Peter changed his accent. He went, Wagwan. <laughs> what I say? He changed his accent. Hey, Simon Peter. <laughs> but you see, I'm pointing to Pentecost and the boldness that comes through Jesus Christ. That Pentecost changed the guy. Now he was fearless. He was courageous. He was bold. He looked at them. He says, whether we should listen to you or listen to God, you yourself be the judges. So they warned him some more. <laughs> Say, hey, we are warning you. Don't go and speak. So he walked out. And the Bible says from there, in chapter 4, they went to where their friends and counterparts were. And they went and told them everything that had happened. And they said, wow. And I want you to Read this prayer with me, and I'll be ready to close. Let's look at Acts chapter number 4. Acts chapter number 4. Oh, Lord, give us boldness. Hallelujah. I need boldness, and I'm sure you, do need, you need some boldness as well. Boldness, 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 courage to go for it. Hallelujah. Okay, so verse number 23 of chapter 4. And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God 
with one accord and saying, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea. The Amplified says that all power belongs to you. It says, and all that is in them. Who by the mouth of your servant David has said, why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? You know people plot vain things. The kings of the earth took their stand <laughs> and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and his Christ. For truly against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the, Jew and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. So they wanted to go against the predetermined counsel of God. It says, now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness, say with me boldness, that with all boldness they may speak your word. Hallelujah. By stretching out your hand to heal and do what? And that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Hallelujah. Such a prayer God will answer. This is not a prayer that you have to worry about because God wants to do that. Say, stretch your hand and heal. As we preach Jesus, stretch your hand and heal some more. Not only this lame man, but heal some more people. Stretch your hand and, and heal in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, and when they had prayed, hallelujah, the place where they were assembled together was shaking. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Hallelujah. They spoke the word of God with what? with boldness. Hallelujah. This morning, my message is quite simple, that you and I need the spirit of boldness. Now, I want to just give three things that we can do to walk in boldness. Number one, it is because we are the righteousness of God. The Bible says in Proverbs, come with me quickly, Proverbs, give me just a couple more minutes and I'll be done. Proverbs chapter number 28 And verse number one. The wicked flee when no one pursues. Isn't that amazing? Wicked people, they run away when nobody's chasing them. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, I think it's in um, Isaiah 64, 6. It says that our righteousness is like what? Filthy rags before God. So we have no righteousness of our own to boast with. But our righteousness, according to the book of um, Romans chapter number 10, talks about the righteousness which is from God. And our righteousness is one that has been given to us through Jesus Christ. Say with me, I am the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We are the righteousness of God. Let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Say so. That we are the righteousness of God. It doesn't mean that we should condone with sin. But we are the righteousness of God. And there's nothing anybody can do about that. I am the righteousness of God. You as a child of God, you are the righteousness of God. And the Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Say with me, I am as bold as a lion. This year, may you be like a lion, not devouring people, but boldness, tenacity, because you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. Number two, because we are in Christ, there is a spirit that comes from him. In the book of Ephesians chapter number three, Ephesians chapter number three, and I believe in verse number 11 or so. According to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have what boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. In Christ Jesus, we have boldness. In Christ Jesus, we have access. In Christ Jesus, we have confidence through faith. So he says, in whom we have boldness and we have access 
and we have confidence through faith. This year, I pray that God will enlighten us and give us wisdom and give us insight, revelation, hallelujah, that we may capture revelation and walk in the boldness that is ours in Christ. You are already the righteousness of God. And then he says also here that in him or in Christ is boldness and access with confidence through faith. My last scripture, Ephesians chapter number 6. And Paul the Apostle is writing to the church in Ephesus and he's writing from prison. An apostle in chains. And then from verse number 18, he's asking them to pray for him. He says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, pray for me, Paul the apostle, Paul the pastor, he is in prison. And he says, pray for me that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. He says, these chains should not hold me back. And I want the church to pray for me so that I'll be bold even in my chains. I will speak with boldness even as I ought to. We hear about Peter and his friends. The Bible says, when the place they were shook, they now spoke the word of God with boldness. So maybe if they were speaking, maybe the Lord is my light and my salvation. The way they would speak the thing, they spoke with boldness. They spoke the word of God with boldness. So three things I've just highlighted. Maybe next week we can look deep into that. But number one, because you are the righteousness of God, hallelujah, you are already as bold as a lion. Walk in that boldness. Hallelujah. Walk in that boldness. And lions don't hang around chickens. They don't hang around turkeys. Hallelujah. Number two, Christ is the source of boldness and confidence. So as we immerse ourselves in him, he will make us bolder than we have ever been. And number three, by prayer. Pray without ceasing. In everything by prayer, please rise to your feet. In everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. I want us to pray this prayer. It says, and the peace of God. Anybody here this morning who has been troubled about anything, I want to say to you that we serve the God who is called the Prince of Peace. And this morning, I want to speak peace over your life. Peace in your home. Peace in your marriage. Peace in your finances. Peace in your desires. Peace in your dreams and your visions. In the name of Jesus. He says, be anxious about nothing. <laughs> Don't be troubled about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Somebody will look at you and say, ah, this woman, you don't have any excuse to be happy, but you are happier than the happiest person. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will garrison your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Can you speak in some tongues just for some two minutes? Lift up your voice and begin to make some declarations uh, that the peace of God is my portion. He says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts like an umpire. Let the peace of God rule. You will say, this one is out. The long tennis court, they will say out and they will say in. Umpire. Let the peace of God be the umpire. Some things must be out in the name of Jesus. Some things will be in. This one, sickness is out. Uh, confusion and chaos 
force is out. Uh, any aggression of the wicked is out. Anything, you be the umpire in the name of Jesus. Uh, he says, let the peace of God rule. Uh, the word is, let the peace of God be an umpire in your heart. Today, this morning, in the name of Jesus, uh, anything that is not of God, uh, any planting that is not of God, uh, this morning you have the power to root it out. Uh, you have the power to pull it down. Uh, anything that is supposed to sabotage your joy, your peace, man, did he be kabab? Any conspiracy against you uh, this morning I have bought and cancel it up. Uh, as the servant of God, I have bought it up uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, any conspiracy against your destiny, against your life, uh, against your health, uh, against your marriage, uh, against your children, uh, against your business, uh, against your ministry, against anything that is yours. Uh, this morning, in the name of Jesus, uh, I cancel it in Jesus' name. Uh, pray. In the name of Jesus. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, Peter says, such as I have. Uh, today, we declare that we also have the name of uh, we have the name of Jesus uh, and such as we have uh, we speak in the name of Jesus uh, the Bible says we also have the same spirit of faith uh, according to that which was written up uh, I believed uh, and therefore I spoke up uh, we also believe uh, and therefore we speak up uh, speak joy uh, speak peace uh, speak prosperity speak the blessing of God uh, over your home uh, over your family over your children uh, over your ministry over your business uh, speak the positive Positive words of truth uh, in the name of Jesus uh, we give you praise every now and again I like to study a bit of Hebrew and he says in Psalm 27 he says in Tahane Alai Mahane Lord you will be in Takuma Alai Muhama Bezota Nivotea he says, though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Lo, you reliably be. My heart will not fear. This morning I speak that over you. Though a host encamp against you, your heart will not fear. Though war rise against you, in this you will be confident. Said, one thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he shall hide me in the day of trouble, in his secret place, in his pavilion. He shall hide me, and now he shall hide me and set me up upon a rock, and my head shall be lifted up above all my enemies around me and I will come to the house of God uh, oh with with shouts of praise and with songs of praise uh, in the name of Jesus uh, with a sacrifice of praise uh, oh we bring sacrifice of praise uh, into the house of the Lord uh, we bring sacrifice of praise uh, and we offer unto you uh, the sacrifices of thanksgiving uh, thank you Holy Spirit we uh, in the name of Jesus. Can I have Bola or one of them come and help me? We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Oh, we bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Offer unto you Yeah. 
It's in Philippians 1.20. And I want to read it for somebody. Whoever you are, take it in the name of Jesus. Philippians. Where's Philippians? Philippians chapter number one. <laughs> uh, God, you're good. Hallelujah. Chapter number 20. According to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. It says, in nothing I shall be ashamed. I speak over you this morning that you will be ashamed in nothing. But as always, in all boldness, may Christ be magnified in your life. May he be exalted in your life. In nothing, living spring shall be ashamed. For the Bible says there is no shame for those who put their trust in him. And we have trusted in you, Lord. And there is no shame for us. I pray over this house and this assembly. And I pray that Almighty God establish you this year and make you all that he has ordained you to be. We thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us welcome Minister Cecilia. Are you bold as a lion? This morning, what do you have in your hands? What do you have in your hands? Let's be on our feet as we give our titan offering. And before we do that, I want us to say a big thank you to Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Open your mouth and thank him for such a powerful ministration. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Thank him for such a powerful ministration. We are blessed. The message was fully packed. I don't know where to start from and I don't know where to end. But all that I'm saying is thank you, Pastor, for such a powerful ministration. We are blessed to have you as our father. You speak into our lives and it comes to pass. I want you to take your envelope, your tithe and offering, please. Speak over it. Speak boldly. That is what you have in your hands. Command 
make a demand, make a declaration over what you want God to do for you. This week, demand something great from the Lord and see if it shall not come to pass. This one, I, 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 I know that he will do it. He has done it many times and this one too is going to do it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's receive the choristers as they give us a powerful ministration. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you be blessed today?
an amazing work in the house. Amen. Thank you so much, men and women of faith, men and women of power. We thank God for your lives and we thank God for the sacrifices you make every weekend and come here on Sunday to lift up the name of the Lord. We thank you for whatever you are doing. We pray that may the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stretch forth our hands towards the offering and make a pronouncement to various. Our Heavenly Father, we are so blessed that you brought us here because David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. We are glad because we came and when we came indeed you have blessed us. Father, we have given and your word says we should give and it shall be given back unto us. Full measure, pressed down, shaking together. Will you cause men to give unto us? Father, with boldness and courage, your sons and daughters have given. And we have placed a demand, a need. I pray that every individual need that is represented here, my God and my King, you will meet it at the very point of our needs. Bless us as we have given for the fervence of your work on earth here. Those who gave and those who couldn't even give. Bless us in Jesus' mighty name. We pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Let's take our seats as we listen to the announcement, if there is any, please. What happened to Elegant and Impact at our 10th anniversary charity ball? Join us for an unforgettable night filled with a delectable three-course meal and the rhythm of inspiring music. This is an exciting opportunity to network with like-minded individuals and promote your business while supporting orphanage projects and helping educate children in need. But that's not all. Our auction is set to feature exclusive football jerseys among its treasures. Seize the chance to bid on these unique collectibles while supporting a great cause. Get your tickets now for an evening that blends sophistication with the spirit of giving. Date Saturday, 4th May 2024. Time 6 p.m. Venue, Holiday Inn, London, Brentford Lock, Commerce Road, TW8 8GA. Tickets can be obtained from eamijotten.org or call 079-444-54912 or 078-761-94995. See you there. 
joy to the nation's international 10th anniversary charity ball. Step into joy to the nation's international 10th anniversary. One nine. The album we've all been waiting for is finally out. Through it all by the anointed music minister of God, Lulu. Through it all album is now available on all major music platforms such as Spotify, iTunes, Amazon Music, YouTube Music and others. What are you waiting for? Head on to your favorite music platform now to listen to the album. Through it all by Lulu and be blessed. Good morning, church. We're so glad you can join us today. If this is your first time joining us, we'd like to give you a special one. My name is Sunil, and here are today's announcements. If this is your first time joining us, we'd like to give you a special welcome. So before you leave, a member of the First Touch team will be nearby to meet you. As a new member, you're encouraged to take part in our membership classes, which are running after service. To confirm your attendance, please speak to Minister Francis. Our weekly meetings are as follows. On Mondays, we have prayers online starting at 7 p.m. On Wednesdays, we have Bible studies also online starting at 7 p.m. And on a Friday, we meet here at Zoe House for prayers starting at 7 p.m. All are invited. And if you don't already know, we are streaming every Sunday service online on YouTube and Facebook. So don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. We have Sunday school running upstairs every week. So parents are encouraged to bring their kids to church so they can be trained up in the way they should go and when they're old, they will not depart from it. The announcement cut-off day is Friday. Any announcements made after this day may not be announced. Announcements can be sent to announcements at livingspringsinternational.org. Thank you. And lastly, eating and drinking is not permitted in the sanctuary. If you'd like to do so, please kindly go to our new looking for you. That's all for me, church. And remember, this year, creation is anticipating our manifestation. Have a blessed week. Thank you so much, audiovisual team. You are doing an amazing work. We thank God for your lives. Amen. Amen. Now, we are here again. For the past one week, has there been any birthdays, please? Hallelujah! <laughs> birthdays, 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 birthdays. Hey, hey, hey. Can we have you here, please? Can we have you to the front, please? Hello. Happy birthday. How are you? Good. Good. Give it up to him. Yes. Hallelujah. We thank God for your lives. It has been the grace of God. It's not by mind nor by power. It's just by the grace of God that you are standing here. Church, let's pronounce a blessing over them. Oh, okay. Let's listen to us. Hallelujah. Amen. God has been so good for me and my household. Eight years journey. It wasn't easy. Um, I have planned to give the main testimony. But I thank God for the life of my little angel, my warrior, and my king. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you, the prayer warrior. At that time, I conceived early on. The journey wasn't easy. What I've been through, it takes the grace of God. But today, here we are. I thank God so, so, so much. 
I was so emotional when I look back and how far God has brought us through. I know as daddy was preaching, he said, some storms, if you find yourself out, you could have taken your own life. But I know God is with me. I thank the entire church so much for your prayers, your encouragement, your support. Without you, maybe I won't be standing here or he may not be in our midst. Through the top doctors in St. Thomas's, guys in St. Thomas's, at the journey five months, two weeks, they advised me to abort this child. And I determined with my faith and tell them that I know what they are talking about. It wasn't God planned for me. Amen. For me, if I look back, I was not deserved to have a baby. But when God started with me, he gave me two at a time. Why at the end that he would deserve to give me a bad thing? So what they are encouraging me or advising me, I'm not taking it. And they said, ah, in this country, even the white people, and I asked one of the doctors, what did you just say? You said some of them. I'm not part of those people. I know the kind of God I'm serving, and I know he never forsake me or leave me. So whatever or what kind of child that will come out from my womb, I will determine or I have determined to face the journey. Today, eight years. Eight years. We have gone through a lot. We have been through a lot. It was me between my God that knows what I've been through. And I, go, I know God hasn't finished with me yet. If I started and tell you what I've been through, you won't believe it. And I know it's because of my faith. Sometimes when I approach pastor, he just asks me, Auntie Doris, where did you get this faith from? And I say, Pastor, I don't know. And I have never regret since this one that I set my mind that I will face the journey. I have never questioned God why or why me. And I know he who started a journey with me will finish it by his name. Amen. When I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. When I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. No, 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 I will never go back anymore. Hallelujah. Doris, the Lord is with you. You know. Like Pastor said on the other day, you don't need someone to tell you that God is with you. He has been with you through the ages past and he will continue to be with you. Just hold on to your faith and see what the Lord will do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, sweetheart. How many years? Hmm? My goodness, then you are like Jesus, so you have to start. <laughs> start your ministry now. We thank God for 33 years. And, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> we bless God for your lives. Let's stretch forth our hands and pray for them in Jesus' name. Father, indeed, it has not been an easy road. But because you are with us, we can face tomorrow. Because you are with us and you said we should not fear. For you are with us, Yahweh. 
we believe and we trust you. And today, your sons and daughter, they stand here to acknowledge your hand in their lives. If it has not been you on their side, we don't know where they would have been. But thank you that when the enemy rose up against them, you raised their standard. And today, they stand here to testify of your goodness. As a church, we give you praise and we thank you for their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Let's sing for them. Happy, 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 happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy, 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 happy birthday. Anniversary, please. Any anniversary? Is there any first time amongst us, please? Is there any? All right. Oh, can you be on your feet, please? Hallelujah. May we know your name, please, so that when we see you outside, we can call you by your name. Thank you. Hi, church. I'm Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Okay. And who invited you, please? Who? I didn't get it. Okay, okay. Okay, Pius. You are wise. You are wise, yes. Thank you so much. You are welcome. As the announcement went, someone will meet you and talk to you and welcome you properly so that uh, you, you feel belong in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I think everything is said and done. But I want us to be on our feet to receive the Father's blessing. The Father's blessings are very important. Yes, we need the Father's blessing, Lord. Pastor, we need the Father's blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please hold somebody by the hand. Find somebody's hand. You know what's coming. I love you with the love of the Lord. And there is nothing you can do about it. Tell them I will gossip about you. I will pray for you. I will love you unconditionally. Hallelujah. They couldn't look you in the eye if they be gossiping about you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for such a wonderful time. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Father, we came one way, we are going another way. Lord, we ask of God that let your blessing rest upon us this week. In everything that we do, let your name be glorified. Keep us out of harm's way and deliver us from every plan of the wicked. And now may Almighty God bless you and keep you. And may he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance upon you and grant you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let us share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Favor. Favor goes before us. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. To keep up to date with all things Living Springs, you can visit our website at livingspringsinternational.org. Follow us on Facebook at Living Springs Church London and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Living Springs International Church. We hope you have a blessed week.